Second classes are the most common malocclusions, and one of the most effective ways to treat a small mandible is to know whether that's really small or it's just rear positioned. In this video, I'll show you how to reposition a rear positioned mandible without the need of a functional appliance. Stay focused and subscribe to this channel. This way, you will get an orthodontic education video every week for free. Amber. She's got an edge to edge, second class occlusion on both sides, complicated by a cross bite on the right. But, is this mandible actually so short? Don't bother making a cephalometric analysis, just tell me at a glance what you would say about this mandible's length. Also, what would you say about its growth direction? If I had to take a bet, I would say we have a hypodivergent subject and a not so short mandible. So, what's holding it back from growing? Take a look at those lateral incisors. They're palatally displaced and force the mandible back. Also, the narrow palate is contributing to the mandible's backward position. Now, we just need to take two easy steps to allow this mandible to reposition forward. First, we need a palatal expansion to match the upper and lower diameters. Second, we need some more overjet in order to give the mandible free space ahead. You can do this by putting four brackets on the incisors. They will protrude and align, and you will get the overjet you need without much effort. If the wire damages the cheek, use a plastic protection tube like this one. Okay, great! Now we have this much space for mandibular advancement. You know that mandibular propulsion is most effective in girls at around age 10-11. So, let's use light early elastics to propel the mandible forward, so that we'll take advantage of the pubertal growth spurt that Amber is experiencing. After a year of light elastics, the mandible has come forward, as you can see from the small overjet we now have. We now use intercuspidation elastics to get a better occlusion. Moreover, in order to exploit every single millimeter of overjet, we remove the lower incisor brackets and splint the lower teeth. This will provide additional space for the mandible to come forward. Also, note how using light early elastics prevents lower incisors flaring, which is one of the most common counter effects of second class mechanics. And after 20 months of treatment, we remove the appliance. We have a nice occlusion and alignment, and that small amount of overjet will be filled by the mandible's differential growth potential at age between 16 and 18. In this video, you have learned how we can exploit the mandible growth potential even without a functional appliance. Looks like Amber's profile has changed for the better, but she will always remain a second-class hippodivergent girl, no matter how beautiful and happy she will be. Sometimes, as orthodontists, we find ourselves fighting against the genetics of our patients. But once we get a nice first class, it's easier for us to get good rest.